small unit tactics in uh, scenario 4 Tula of Iron Cross by 3W. Uh, this is going to be another one of my workman like uh, update, play updates, and commentary. Um, but first, why am I um, why am I making these videos about a game virtually forgotten? Um, I do think that this is truly a great game. Um, I think that it I think it allows real-world small unit tactics um, appropriate to the level that it is supposed to represent. That's individual soldier. So this is individual soldier as I've, ta as I've talked about individual soldier individual well this soldier has a is armed with an MP but um, yeah individual soldiers crude weapons um, individual AFVs so we have our Panzer 4E um, okay um, um, and I also wanted to say again this is commentary not that all pieces of my commentary about this game in particular are especially uh, complete um, or well well thought out but it's the nature of designs like this that I like that it seems like every little or even if I can't say every little I'll say the vast majority of game tactical situations are interesting um, in and of themselves they're interesting and I like that I like that a lot that's actually that I like it a lot that's what I'm looking for um, okay we are Oh, I wanted to make this video because we are at the end of the first player uh, and that's the German player the first player uh, turn of the game turn one and here, I actually had some use for the, um, it shouldn't be considered a phase, I believe. I do not believe that this should be considered a phase, but it is numbered eight on the turn sequence summary. But again, I don't think it should be considered a phase because in this game, phases matter. The, well, yeah, phases matter. So I think in terms of seven phases plus this eighth step, if you want to call it, um, but it's the free up down state uh, unit change for both players for both players That's interesting. Um, yeah, time will tell what that means what the implications of that are but Let me explain what I mean. Okay, so I'll, now I'll go in my, the order that I Intended here, so I got my little Reminder number one here. Oh, yeah, this is a good example the medium the German medium machine gun that came up That's making its way over. He'll be here towards the built-up area um, it was, all German units started down, because I thought, I thought that was the more correct way to do it, but on its, uh, when it's down, the crew has a proficiency rating of 8. And actually, I think they, yeah, they failed a proficiency rating, I think, to move, as a matter of fact. So, if they go up, they increase by 2. They significantly increase their their ability to um, to fire and move because their proficiency rating here, let me show this proficiency rating is bottom right so it's bottom right is not movement allowance movement allowance is given on a table it's not on the counter but right here they were down they started down with the white writing and the pro proficiency rating is eight I hope that comes through without too much glare it's eight right there. They go up, it turns to 10. Significantly increases its, uh, yeah, its ability to act. So, or its readiness to act, whatever you wanna call that. But, so I wanted that. I want to increase its chances of opening fire and moving forward. So I thought I'll take the free up down uh, state change here for that. Uh, two here. Um, I'm thinking about moving, of course, playing solitaire, I can think in terms of what is going to come in the future, right? But I was thinking about moving the tank up through here, and then I was thinking, well, if he moves somewhere in here, then, uh, let's see, 
yeah. Yeah, right about here, I was thinking the AT gun, which I just realized the AT gun would actually have to move. But let's just say the AT gun was at its field of fire towards the tank and the tank moved there. That reminded me as I was looking through the line of sight, what the line of sight would be. This brings me back to the, the art on the map. So um, I, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. But there is this small graphic here. It's in the corner of the hex. I can't even say that it overlaps into the hex. So it's, it, it is entirely within the hex here, but it is smaller. It's not as big as these other, uh, again, what look like burned out trees. It's a smaller one. So um, I guess, so I guess I answered my own question. I guess it is considered one tree in a clear hex with a road. But that's what I was wondering about the art. Um, there are lots of little, I guess my point is you, you're going to have to make a lot of little calls as you play and you discover these, these little uh, discrepancies. All right, three over here. Um, I think I, yeah, I flipped over, similar to the medium machine gun, I flipped over the light machine gun. So now the Germans are kind of getting more into the action and part of that is getting, going from down to up because that's significantly changed. That triples the AP firepower. AP firepower is only three when he's, when he's down. But when he goes up, when he goes up, it turns to nine. So that's what I want. Again, now he's in an improved position. So I'm thinking that's, actually he's in an improved, in IP2 as a matter of fact. So I think that's a good trade-off to get that extra AP firepower four down here. So. This four here is a reminder to me, and I'm not going to go into detail because I only have a few more minutes on this video, but this reminds me that, and this is why the game is so good and the designs I'm looking for is, you really have to think about what you're doing here because it's not obvious. Like all these German units here, I think they should stay down and they should stay down until the Germans are able to do something with the Russians here. and that. Lead me, led me to think about moving the tank. And maybe the tank should be more more directly in the fight here. Um, but anyways, in any case, that reminder was for me to comment on the fact that it is like, there's no, there's no bum rushing here. There is no, just, just fire enough times and you're gonna get your reduced result. It is none of that formulaic stuff. It's really how do you mount this attack, it's really not obvious, and that's what makes it all so interesting. Here, this uh, number five, here's a reminder um, to me to comment on the unique, I think it's unique, I do think it's unique, and I would be curious to see if there are other games that do this, but um, I've been removing markers that no longer apply, but this marker, again, this is my own marker, the game doesn't come with them, right? You, you recognize these as GMT markers. Um, this is my reminder that these units fired in the fifth phase. Well, this still is relevant, um, um, basically for roughly three phases forward. So the point being that you go, that they fired in the fifth phase, you go the sixth phase, the seventh phase, you don't count the eighth phase of up-down unit change. You go to the first phase of the next turn, but you, but that's morale. You don't count. You always skip the morale phase. Then you go to the support fire phase. So um, so in this case, it's going to be the Russian player turn. But if this if the roles were reversed, would you have that? I don't know. I got to think about that. But the support fire phase is actually for the Russian side. So. Never mind. I, I was. It will. This applies through the second phase of the next player turn, which in fact, in this case, is the Russian player turn. But that's why I'm leaving it on there for whatever for whatever happens. I don't know. Finally, six down here. Uh, what was this about? Oh right. Um, this is real quickly, real quickly before the video ends. You'll see now that the um, that the Russians have made observation. Observation here and observation here with my little reminder markers. That you would expect from the defender. 